Sexing the Cherry, written by acclaimed English author Jeanette Winterson in 1989, presents a unique blend of genres including magical realism, postmodernism, interpolated narratives, and intertextual pastiche. While nominally set in a version of 17th-century London, the novel delves into profound explorations of time and love. At its core lies the relationship between a woman and the foundling boy she raises, delving into the realms of both the actual world and the world of imagination, questioning the authenticity and truthfulness of experiences. The novel embraces themes of discovery and rebirth, evoked by the title itself, which references the process of creating hybrid entities in botany. The narrative unfolds through alternating perspectives of its two main characters Dog Woman and Jordan. Introduced initially as Dog Woman, a colossal being who resides by the River Thames. Her name forgotten, she is identified by her occupation of raising fighting dogs for street entertainment. Dog Woman's physical appearance is grotesque, characterized by her towering stature, flat nose, near toothless mouth, and prominent smallpox scars that harbor fleas. Jordan, her beloved son, is a foundling rescued from the Thames, named after a more respectable sounding river. Dog Woman cherishes Jordan and takes him on walks, restrained by leash. He proudly boasts of her ability to fit six oranges in her mouth. While Dog Woman possesses strength and a zest for life, she remains ignorant and somewhat naive. The novel skillfully employs comedy through her humorous misunderstandings of human anatomy and sexuality, as well as her observations of the world around her. Despite her larger-than-life presence as a mythical figure, her narrative thread remains the most anchored in reality. The story of the dog woman unfolds against the backdrop of the tumultuous Puritan Revolution of 1641 and the subsequent civil war. Following the beheading of King Charles I by anti-monarchists in 1649 and the installment of Oliver Cromwell as Lord Protector, the dog woman sees an opportunity to exact her own form of justice. Inspired by the beheading of the king, she takes it upon herself to punish the Puritans who threaten her livelihood by attempting to outlaw dogfighting, gambling, and other amusements cherished by the poor. Enduring Cromwell's rule, the dog woman bides her time until the restoration of 1661 reinstates King Charles II on the throne. Seizing the moment, she orchestrates a brothel as a means to exact revenge on her detested neighbors, preacher Scroggs and neighbor Firebrace. Jordan, on the other hand, narrates his own experiences of travel, both in the physical world and in realms beyond. As a young boy, he develops a profound love for the sea and occupies his time constructing model ships. Jordan finds guidance in the king's gardener, John Tradescant, who shares his ambitions of searching the world for exotic plants to bring back to England for Charles I. Under Tradescan's mentorship, Jordan learns the intricacies of botany. Their voyages yield fascinating discoveries, including the introduction of the pineapple, which strikes the English audience as sensually provocative. This fruit triggers memories of Jordan's visit to an exhibit showcasing the first banana ever brought to England a fruit that fascinated Londoners due to its resemblance to male genitalia. Following Tradescan's passing, Jordan continues his travels. Though the dog woman believes her son has disappeared into the far reaches of the earth, she remains his constant anchor and resting place between his voyages. However, as time goes on, Jordan's adventures begin to unfold entirely within his own mind, conjuring extraordinary people and places for him to engage with. In one such escapade, he assumes the guise of a woman to gain insight into the true thoughts and perspectives of the opposite sex. In another extraordinary journey, Jordan finds himself in a city where love has become a deadly plague, causing the demise of its inhabitants. The town is under the strict control of an embittered prostitute and a wise monk who have banned love altogether to protect the remaining survivors. Unknowingly Jordan strums a guitar, releasing love once again, leading to the demise of everyone in the city except the monk and the prostitute. The novel leaves open the question of whether Jordan possesses the ability to manipulate time and space to reach these places, or if they exist purely within his imagination. As Jordan continues his mind traveling adventures, he ponders the nature of time, space, reality, and, most notably, love. During one of his imaginary excursions, he becomes infatuated with a dancer named Fortunata, whom he glimpses at a party. Driven by his deep affection, Jordan embarks on a quest to find her. Along the way, he encounters Zilla and her sisters, who reside in a castle and embody the twelve dancing princesses from the Brothers Grimm fairy tale. In their tale, the princesses clandestinely danced each night in a magical palace until a prince uncovered their secret, leading to their arranged marriages with his twelve brothers. Jordan listens to the stories of eleven of the women, each revolving around the idea that love and passion have little to do with the institution of marriage. 
their narratives reveal failed unions due to love for other women, a gay husband, and constant infidelity. After liberating themselves from their unhappy marriages, these women have found true happiness living together and pursuing their own desires. Eventually, Jordan locates Fortunata on the island of Barbados. However, after spending a month together, she chooses to be unattached and sends him away. Once again, Jordan seeks solace in the loving presence of his devoted dog woman mother. At this point, the novel introduces two new characters who bear similarities to dog woman and Jordan, but exist within the context of the 1990s. Nicholas Jordan yearns to explore the world through sailing, a dream that leads him to make the unconventional decision of joining the army, much to the disappointment and concern of his parents. While preparing to embark on this new path, he comes across a newspaper article about an unnamed woman who dedicates her life to raising awareness about environmental degradation by sitting beside a polluted river. Intrigued and determined, Nicholas sets out on a quest to find this enigmatic woman, despite the apparent challenges. Towards the conclusion of the book, these two distinct storylines converge when Nicholas and a woman collaborate in a daring act of arson, setting fire to a factory. The resulting flames engulf the London of Jordan and the dog woman, symbolizing a transformative event. As they flee the blazing chaos, Nicholas holds on to a glimmer of hope for the future. This merging of narratives showcases the overlapping of the marvelous and the horrific, the mythical and the mundane, in a masterfully inventive manner. Upon its publication, the novel received widespread acclaim and continues to be regarded as a critically acclaimed work. In recognition of her remarkable literary contributions, Jeanette Winterson was honored as a commander of the Order of the British Empire in 2018, a prestigious accolade in England. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.